Grant Township Board of Trustees order for Monday, October 17th. Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Chris Barnett. Here. Penny Schultz here. Donnie Steele. Here. Brian Burney. Here. Julia Dorempo. Here. Mike Flood. Here. Cameron Urbanowski. Here. We are all present. We always start our meeting with an invocation and pledge. Tonight we are joined by not one but two yes. pastors <laughs> from Lake Orion Baptist Church. Pastor Steve Sanders and Tony Bryson are here. Um, one of them or both of them will lead us in our invocation and we will all say the pledge after that. So uh, please come forward. Looks like we get Tony Bryson tonight uh, and uh, remain standing after the invocation for the pledge. Shall we pray together? Dear God, we pause before this meeting tonight to thank you for the good gift of human government, for those you have sent to punish evildoers and to commend those who do good. Tonight, we lift up Township Supervisor Barnett and the Orion Township Board of Trustees. We pray for them and for all the departments, advisors, and administrations with whom they work in governing our community. Grant each trustee humility and wisdom, discernment and integrity, patience and love for each other and for the citizens of Orion Township, especially as they consider how to lead and protect us in these days. May our trustees have clarity of understanding and in communication. May they make wise and productive decisions that will help the township. May they have grace to compromise when necessary and the courage to promote righteousness in this community. Oh God, thank you for giving us the privilege of living in Orion Township and in America. Thank you for the freedom we enjoy. Please bless our township and our country. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you all. Thank you, Pastor Bryson. Speaking of commending those who do good, <laughs> we have a presentation tonight. Uh, first of all, the first presentation We'll be moved to our next meeting, Orion.Events. That's our partner out at Wildwood Amphitheater. Uh, they asked to go to the next meeting, so we'll hear from them in November. Uh, but we are joined by members of the Lake Orion Lions Club. And uh, if you guys want to come forward at this time, whoever's, yes. They do. <laughs> They're an incredible nonprofit in our community that's been doing good for many, many years and have come to our board over the years and given reports on their activities, and they are here tonight, and I am going to turn it over to you. If you want to, I know who you are, but if you don't want to introduce yourself to our audience and those viewing from home. And since our predecessors weren't, the people before us weren't here, we get double the time. <laughs> uh, I'm, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Roger Broder. I've, I, I am a past president of the Lake Orion Lions Club, and I have Denise with me. I'm Denise Suk. I'm the current president of Lake Orion Lions Club. So yes, we do have women in the club, about 50-50, I would say, yeah. as well as a couple of members and spouses of members on the board here. We appreciate that. So I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on what we're up to, um, along with our contact info. So on the next slide, um, so some of the things that we do, people don't know about because we're kind of in the background. Eyeglasses and hearing aids when people are emergency mm -hmm. situations, they can't quite handle it themselves, maybe the schools contact us for kids, we help with those. The senior all night party. Um, up in Lapeer, there's a camp where blind and other disabled kids can go and have a camp experience like everybody else's kids. They even have, they do bow and arrow shooting, come on. <laughs> Rock wall and a zip line. That was started by Lake Orion Lions and is supported by Lions uh, nationwide, really. Leader Dog for the Blind, of course, in Rochester, was started by Lions Clubs back in the 20s, I believe it is. Um, Project Kids site, you'll see us with a big black tent at many of the community events, including our Jubilee and a lot of other events, that we are in there with a camera checking kids' eyesight for free. And I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. At, our, at the uh, Dragon on the Lake, during Dragon on the Lake, a woman came up to us and told us with her daughter, daughter had glasses, said that she's in third grade now, and when she was real little, we checked her eyes, and she was near blind. She was so bad, and they had no idea since she wasn't in school yet. So she <clears throat> found it out by having us check her eyes for free. 
So look for us at all the events. Scholarships for Lake Oregon High School, we do two a year, help out some of the kids there. Going to college, uh, we have a, a essay contest for that. We help support a couple of little league teams that play right down the road here. Uh, and we also support the first robotics teams in Lake Oregon. So, so a couple of the things that are coming up, um, and this is the key time of year for us, our Christmas basket program. Uh, a lot of people in the community volunteer. You can see in the first picture there on the top, we set up at the Cirque Gym, we fill the place with food. And that food comes from the community, it comes from the schools, and a lot of it still comes from food that we buy. We go to Meyer and Kroger and all over and buy food. That's where the community comes in. We need help with volunteering. You see all those boxes of food? They have to be sorted, the food has to be sorted and it has to go in those boxes to go out to families and then be delivered by volunteers in the community. So we bring everybody together. It's a family event. Get your family out there. My kids have been doing it since they were six years old and they want to skip school every year to help out. Mm -hmm. So, and on the right, this one has been a great event for us for about seven, eight years now. At the Pine Trees School, we go in there, and this is probably the most heartwarming thing that we do all year. We go in there with Santa, Mrs. Santa, Mrs. Claus. <laughs> we even have an elf. <laughs> we have an elf that comes in, and we go around and we give the kids presents. We have... We have lunch for them, we have treats, and uh, the, the kids and the teachers just absolutely love that event every year. So that's a fun one. And on the next page, uh, you'll see we have the auction flyer there. Well, this is how we pay for it. So the, the uh, Christmas basket program where we're, we're giving food, we're giving like two weeks worth of food to over 200 families along with paper towel, cleaning supplies, all kinds of necessities, and gifts. <clears throat> so the Christmas auction, we haven't had it in two years, so big year for us. Bringing it back, we're revamping it a bit. It's going to be even more fun. We have a mediocre MC. You know, give, a, give a guy, a, give a salesman a microphone. You never know what will happen. So um, we, I have, we have plenty of these flyers. And the other way that we, we um, support the... Uh, Christmas basket programs with our good fellow papers. So I just <laughs> submitted the paperwork to Penny the other day. So we're, uh, we're ready to go on that and we'll be out on the streets on the day after Christmas and the following weekend. Or, I'm sorry, the day after Thanksgiving and the following weekend, pushing papers and taking donations. So if you can help with any of that, here's how you can do it. Donating money or auction items, come to the auction. I have flyers if anybody here wants them but they're on our Facebook page. You can email us, call us, whatever. We'll get you tickets if you want them. They do sell out quickly. Um, last, in 2019, when we had it last, we sold 300. You can only fit so many people in the Malash dealership. It gets pretty small fast. So we're, uh, we sell out usually before the event. So come to the auction, support us during Goodfellows when you see us on the street. Um, Flag us down, don't hit us. <laughs> uh, volunteer for the Christmas basket program, <laughs> December 16th and 17th. Again, go to our Facebook page, take a look for info there. We need all the volunteers we can get, all ages. Uh, donating food and gifts, we will have drop boxes at all the schools are collecting food. We will have drop boxes probably here. I know the library, a lot of places, wonder cleaners, a lot of places will have drop boxes for gifts. Or uh, even better, come join us. If you're looking for something to do, we have a lot of couples. We have, we have we're, there's one family that's four generations. Now we got the 20 year olds in, in the club. So all ages, we just, we're just a bunch of people that get together, have dinner and maybe a drink or two and figure out how to raise money and distribute it to people. And 100% of what we take in goes back out to the community. We don't, we don't our admin budget is our own money our own donations for, for paper and supplies. We don't have an admin budget coming from the community donations. So 100% goes out. And they paid me double for this. <laughs> getting two times zero to do this tonight. So we even pay for our own events. We, I've, we pay for our own tickets to the auction. So no, uh, no charity money goes to Lions. It's, so it's here's our contact information. 
Again, if you want a flyer, I have some. We have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of ways you can help Leave out. those, if you could leave those yes. on the table outside, we'll leave them out here. At the sign-in table, and we'll make sure they get distributed. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of board members that are Lions members, and we um, really appreciate all you do in our community. You guys are always stepping up. And um, I can't say enough great things about what, what you do. We, um, I lost my train of thought. I was the gonna... Jubilee is the best one. <laughs> well, I would was, I was always have fun there. Um, really quick question. Go ahead with your question. Who's the elf? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. No. My name's uh, Phil. Who is the elf? <laughs> Donnie's husband? Yeah, yeah. I'm Phil's, loving Phil's it. a member. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe job. it was Donnie. It's one of his favorite roles is being that elf. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> one, one thing, I was at the library taking a bunch of eyeglasses in there, and that box was full. Awesome. That was about, oh, maybe month ago. Yeah, we have eyeglass and hearing aid donation boxes yeah. all over the township too, yeah. many places. So. And that's why I just remember, a lot of our directors and staff have helped at volunteer at the Christmas basket packing, yeah. and that is a well-oiled machine. Absolutely. I have, you guys I have, have planned one, that out. one realtor that helps me figure out where everything's going because she knows all the streets in the township <laughs> when we have to figure out where the food is going. <laughs> awesome. It's well, thank you both fun. for all your service and the rest of the Lions. Thank you for being here tonight. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. Denise, did you want to add anything? All I wanted to say was uh, we were just invited by Pine Tree Elementary to come over and talk to, about humility and um, humility and like basically giving back without asking for anything. So Phil took that role and went and talked to the staff at Pine Tree on their year of positive thinking. And uh, they asked us as Lions to come in. So that's pretty cool. That's Anyhow, cool. thanks for having us tonight. Thanks. Pine Tree Center is one of my top two or three favorite places to hang out in the township. You can't leave there without a smile on your face. We're hoping to have some of the special students come and help on the Christmas baskets. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you so you. much for being here. Moving on, we, got, we have more good news before we get into our agenda tonight. We take a couple minutes every month to recognize our brightest and best, and tonight is no exception. Um, so I'm going to turn this portion of, of the... Um, Citizen of the Month over to Julia and Kim, who recently, with Sam Timko, were in St. Louis. No, not St. Louis. Yes. St. Louis. Louis, yeah. For a really cool um, event, so I'll turn it over to you all. So America in Bloom uh, envisions communities across the country as welcoming and vibrant places to live, work, and play, benefiting from colorful plants and trees, enjoying clean environments, celebrating heritage, and planting pride through volunteerism. So we applied for a grant. Sam did a ton of the writing uh, for that grant. We were awarded a grant through America in Bloom, and then we got to go to the symposium that was in St. Louis a couple weeks ago um, to uh, meet with 39 other communities that had also applied for grants. We got to cut the ribbon on Brown Road the other week, uh, which if you've seen those plantings, it looks so nice compared to what was out there before. And uh, we did come home with a beautiful award, which is right here. So uh, surprise to us is that we won the um, Outstanding Achievement Award for Community Vitality, which basically means that Orion was awarded the best community out of the 39 that were recognized uh, that night for everything that we showed them in two days uh, that we had advisors come and go through our community. Sam and Jenny had a tight schedule that we ran that we took these advisors through everywhere and anywhere in Orion that you can think of. We uh, ran them through everywhere and they gave us an amazing report back on things to look forward to, things to work on, and we're really excited to keep working with them in the future to see how many other projects we can complete um, using grant funds and just to be able to meet other communities and see what they're doing. It was really good. Yeah, so um, our citizen of the month to this month is actually a group of people, and those people um, really, really helped us uh, show off the township and um, the village as well. We could not have done it without them. Um, so it's a group effort this month, and so I see some people out in the audience, but I have a really big list of the volunteers who, who either met us somewhere and showed our advisors around um, or you know, explain things about our, our township to them, and they were a massive, massive part of making a, uh, this a success. So I have a long list, and if, if you're here, um, you want them to come up? Come to the podium, and yeah. we'll, we'll do a little presentation. That'd be great. Yeah. 
All right, so first we want to say thank you to Tammy Gerling, who is not here. We want to say um, thank you to Molly Lalone from the DDA, um, the Foders, the Grant Foder and his family for the Foder Family Farm, Scott and Laura Gabriel, uh, Jimmy Johnson, Chase Munn, who is our library director, Linda Moran, she showed us the um, beautiful Rotary Garden um, that just won the Chamber of Commerce um, award anyway. Um, Shannon Filarecki, Shannon here. Kathleen Klein, yes, <laughs> Kathleen, come on up. Kathleen showed us uh, around um, the landfill and showed us all about the um, you know, um, conservation, conservation efforts. efforts and the Palmier Gardens and all that good stuff. Um, Patrick Ross and Aaron Watley from Parks and Rec, of course, showed off our wonderful um, parks uh, from Keatington. Or do we have Beth here from Keatington? No, Beth, and I think Mel, is that the name? Anyway, they showed us the um, entryway to their homeowners association and the numerous gardens within their HOA that they take care of. We also had um, Larry Wick from Lake Orion United Methodist Church and um, Bob Watros from the uh, memorial, the Veterans Memorial. So uh, yeah, you know what? You're just always up here, Mr. Watros, aren't you? Yeah. They were super impressed with all of the people that they met um, and we just wanted to thank them again for taking time out of their day in uh, July and getting this done for us. So thank you yes, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And if we could have Julia, Julia and Ken and Sam go down to the podium as well. We'll get a quick oh. photo. Yeah, you have to be in this one. Bring the award. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The other award is hanging up at the Orient Center. So we did also get a beautiful large plaque that is now with the Orient Center. And so on behalf of the residents of Orient Township, we want to present the American and Bloom team with our for giving their time and talents in showcasing Orion Township during the recent American Bloom visit, which resulted in Orion winning the coveted Community Vitality Award. You are all recognized as our October Citizens of the Month. Congratulations. Yay. Awesome. Perfect. I want to mention one more employee recognition before we move on to the business of our meeting. I'm excited to announce that Kyle Cameron, our EMS coordinator, graduated from Eastern Michigan University Fire, Staff, and Command Executive Leadership Program just this past week. It's an intensive nine month program, develops fire service personnel to be better leaders and change agents in their agency totally optional on his own. He went through that course, and we want to congratulate Mr. Cameron, who's not here tonight, but if you see him out and about, uh, he represents our fire department well, yes. And then, just as we just, I guess I had one more thing. Uh, we, we had our first open house in two, over two years at Fire Station One last Sunday. It was a perfect day, and we think we had over a 1,000 um, residents that came through throughout the three-hour open house. Tons of live demos. They cut cut up a car using the jaws of life. Um, they let children uh, spray fire hoses and climb in trucks, and it was an awesome day. And most of our fire personnel were on sta on on scene that day, even uh, with their families on their time off. So, thanks to the OTFD for serving us with professionalism, and for all of our residents that came out and visited us uh, during the open house. Now, this is the always the awkward transition. <laughs> Moving on to paying of our bills. <clears throat> is there a motion for tonight's bill run? Ms. Steele. I would make a motion to pay the bills in the total amount of $1,663,748.85. And just one quick comment. Four. Thanks. Okay, go ahead with your um, um, We had a water bill. 
of 555,000. And normally they run about 300,000, but it's like um, almost like an estimated bill. And we um, righted the bill on this last bill of an extra 180,000. And then we had the sewer bill of $311,157. So those were the big items on the bill <coughs> run. And that's a pass through to our residents. Okay. Any other comments or questions from board members? Any public comment on the bill run? Seeing no one come forward, we'll ask Clerk Schultz to call the roll. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dorimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. The bills are paid. Moves us on to public comment. We offer the public opportunity to chat with us throughout the meeting. This would be the first chance you have for anything that's not on our agenda tonight. If you want to chat with us on agenda items, please do so at that time. Uh, anyone want to give public comment at this time? Name and address for the record. Lil Hutchison, uh, 230 North Baldwin. Um, I, I know you don't answer questions, but I'm going to bring this forward. I got my absentee ballot, and I noticed that there's an Oakland County public transportation millage. Now, as I'm reading through this, I also know that NOTA was on the, uh, asked for a renewal in August and it passed and I'm, uh, I'm for this. I, I use NOTA. Um, so there's not much information out on this. So I'm just, I'm wondering, um, I see it's, uh, it's for all of Oakland County, the way I read it, WODA, Oak, OPC, SMART, and NODA. So I guess I'm wondering if NODA just passed the mill, if we just renewed their millage in August, then what's happening here? Are we going to pay twice if this passes? And does everybody in Oakland County, I mean, uh, it's very, it, you. You can't get any information on it. My daughter-in-law uh, searched for a couple hours today and she said there was something in the Detroit News. And I don't know if you guys can tell me where do you go to get information so you can know how to vote because I'm not, I'm not opposed to NOTA, but I don't know if I want to pay for a Western and in the smart bus, in um, this OPC, and and WODA. I mean, is if there's somewhere you can go to get some clarification on this, or I know you don't have to answer, but somebody's got to tell us something. Yep, appreciate your comments. I will reference this in my board member comments at the end of the meeting. Okay, thank so you. So I will get, try to give you some more information, but we've received quite a few comments. It's nothing the township has initiated. And I'll tell you a little bit more uh, at the end, just to stick with our normal protocol of uh, public comment. Is there anyone else who wants to give public comment at this time? Seeing no one come forward, we'll move on to approval of today's agenda. We do want to remove, uh, request that we remove items 8G. That'll be on our next meeting. We weren't quite ready for that one. Um, and then also item 3A, we'll put that on our next meeting as well. Um, and then we did have an item added Item 9C, request to be added to the Orient Investment Policy Update. So I'd like to recommend those um, modifications to the agenda. Are there any other changes? Did or you say 9A? 9A. 9C. 9C. Oh, I thought you said 9 What did you say before that, though? Yeah, what did you say before uh, that? Re remove 3A and 8G. So remove the Orient Events presentation oh, and the GM oh, fees. Okay. And then adding 9C the Orient Investment Policy. It is on the printed agendas, but it wasn't on the packet that went out originally. So those are my proposed changes. Are there any other changes or a motion to approve as amended? Mr. Supervisor, I would move to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Thank you. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we have a plan for tonight. T that takes us to tonight's consent agenda. <clears throat> all these items will be approved with one vote. The consent agenda consists of the following items. Uh, we'll be approving a set of minutes from our October 3rd meeting. 
awarding a bid for auditing services, closing the general capital improvement fund and municipal building fund, uh, approving the Orion Stoney Conklin water main project, purchasing a Gator utility vehicle, for the Parks and Rec Department, the matured called and purchases of securities and bonds for the water and sewer and general fund accounts, uh, approving a street closure on Ball Mountain Road and setting the election inspector training rate. Is there a motion to approve tonight's Mr. consent? Supervisor, I move to approve the consent agenda as amended. Support. Moved by flood, supported by Bernie. Um, are there any public comments first on the consent agenda items? Anything on that agenda? Seeing no one rush forward, I'll bring it up here to the board. I will note um, we did go out for a request for proposals for auditing services, um, and we interviewed two firms. When I say we, I mean the budget and procurement director, chief of staff, clerk, treasurer, myself, some tre uh, some other staff members, and. It's our unanimous recommendation to hire Yo and Yo for auditing services. I believe they do have a representative here that we'll meet in a moment. Um, and that Orient Stony Conklin water main project, we're constantly looking to improve our system. Uh, and that there's a road project coming in that area, and we're going to take advantage of the pro of that construction uh, process. Which is, uh, I want to thank Bill Basigal, who's here from Water and Sewer, uh, for that. Are there any other um, comments or questions from any board members? Yes, Ms. Schultz. Um, yes, I just want to say thank you, Michael. He's here tonight from Yo and Yo, and we have a very short presentation that I think would be excellent for everyone to see. It'll only take a couple minutes. We do have that queued up. I also want to thank Plant and Moran, who were our <coughs> previous auditors, and they've done a wonderful job, and I truly appreciate their service to the community. Thank you. Um, you do have a presentation on this? It's a very short one. I don't have it. Bummer. It's not in the web. It's not in there. Oh, 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 maybe in the actual it's board in book. in the actual board packet. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. I can have a comment when we get there. Go ahead, Ms. Okay. Steele. Um, just on number C, closing the general capital improvement fund. And we did open a um, bank account uh, through Chase, and we had opened a investment pool fund through Oakland County, and we have closed that investment pool fund. Um, that held that money to in, earn interest, and um, that Chase account has been uh, directed to be the electric charger dropping of funds when people charge their cars and they use the app, that money will go into that separate bank account now. I'm going to piggyback off that, uh, Treasurer. Uh, we'll have to update our plan uh, A on our investment policy to include that bank in there. So we want to make sure we update that uh, investment. I think it's part A or part B. This is all your financial institutions. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and that's, that's, coming, sure. that's coming. That's coming. It's on number C. Oh, pardon me. Nine C. Nine C. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. jumping the gun a little okay, bit here. That's good. Okay. <laughs> but it goes along with it. Yes. Excuse me. Okay, and I did have the presentation. My apologies. I was looking at my PowerPoint. Um, Mr. Rolka is here from Yo and Yo. Um, you want to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about the firm? And it, I know. Several of us have met you and interviewed with you, and we'll let you introduce yourself to the rest of the crew. Great, thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, first of all, good, even good evening, and this is uh, part of the presentation that we presented to the to group deciding on the auditors. So keeping it very brief to just give you a brief introduction of me as well as my firm. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, I'll let you read this through. My name's Mike Rolka. I'm a CPA and a CGFM. I uh, have 10 years experience with Yo and Yo, and I am a member of our government services team. I uh, work probably 95% on governmental clients, uh, audits, and some consulting work as well. Um, I have the, the fortune to work with several communities in the area, such as City of Auburn Hills and City of Rochester Hills as well as I've uh, had a close relationship with other consultants you've worked with, such as Woodhill Group. Skip ahead to the next one. Yo and Yo has been around for just about 100 years now. Next year will be our 100 year anniversary. We're very proud of that. Uh, I only have 10% of that under my belt, but, but we'll continue along there. We have nine offices, um, and we're, we're growing rapidly here in Southeast Michigan. We also have three affiliates. Uh, a computer consulting division, a wealth management division, and a medical billing division. Uh, 
within all of that, we have over 200 professionals uh, working throughout the state. Our, our mission is outstanding business solutions, and that applies to governments just as much as it does private companies. Some of the core values listed here, uh, I'll let you read them for yourself, but uh, the one that I really like to, to hit on is exceeding client expectations. I make myself available for my clients nearly 24-7. Uh, I only say that slightly joking, so um, I look forward to working with you guys. <laughs> Lastly, um, although we are only in Michigan, we are a member of Prime Global, which is a top five, one of the top five largest independent accounting firm associations to help give us global reach if there are issues that are unusual that we may need to reach out for additional assistance with working through. Um, with that, uh, I'd open up to any questions and, and say that I'm really happy to work with communities that are winning awards. That's fantastic. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Um, are there any questions for Michael? I would just echo what Clerk Schultz said and say we're excited to work with your firm. And also, I uh, agree, we, we were blessed to work with a great partner in Plant Moran for many, many years uh, and their whole team, and we want to thank them for their service um, and excited to work with, with you and you going forward um, for the next few years, it looks like. So with that, thank you for your presentation. I'll bring it back up to the board. Um, any other comments or questions on any of the consent agenda items? Good evening. Thank you. Yep. Thank, no problem. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, seeing none, Clerk Schultz, would you call the roll on con the tonight's consent agenda? Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Next item is pending business item A which is a request for payment in lieu of constructing a safety path in front of API Consulting. Um, I will, um, I'll just run through this real quick. Following the Parks and Paths Advisory Committee recommendation, it's requested that the board accepts a contribution of $10,000 to the safety path fund from API Consulting from Planning Commission Case 2021-40 in lieu of constructing the safety path in front of their property at 339 West Clarkston. Um, they, added, they made an addition to their property. It looks very beautiful, by the way. Congratulations. Um, and when, the plan, when it went in front of the Planning Commission in April of 2021, they requested waivers, including pacing the path. During the meeting, the Planning Commission recommended to waive the safety path con construction pending the review and recommendation of the Parks and Path Committee. The Parks and Path Committee reviewed the potential for con contribution to the safety path fund in lieu of construction in May 2021. However, in June, the applicant made the decision to construct the path instead of asking the board to, to allow them to contribute to the safety fund, which we've done this several times, um, lots of times, but several times recently. So since that time, they've been asked, they've asked for um, us to reconsider that and allow them to uh, contribute $10,000 to the safety path fund in lieu of constructing the path. Um, so there is a recommended motion in the packet. I'd entertain that at this time. So moved. Support. Moved by Schultz and supported by Urbanowski as presented in the packet, which I will read in case anyone's watching from home, to um, move that in lieu of the construction of an eight-foot safety path along the front of 339 West Clarkson Road, the developer owner agrees to contribute to the Orient Township Safety Path Fund $10,000 prior to final construction and building approval process. So... Are there any comments? The applicant is here. I see them present. Um, I don't know if we need to hear from them unless the board would like to, or if you guys would like to speak, you could come forward as well. Ms. Steele. Just real quick, um, I'm on the Parks and Path Committee as well as Aaron, and uh, when it was first brought to us, just to kind of give some background, uh, what we usually do in the process is have OHM give us a, um, a price on what they would uh, think that the cost of the path would be, and the price came back at 20 and um, we, being that there is no path on either side of this um, building um, along the south side of Clarkston Road, uh, we agreed to um, offer a price that's less than what the path would be. So, um, so we don't have a, a path to nowhere and we can use those funds directly and to give the developer a, a little bit of a break. So that's just the background on that. Okay. Um, any other 
comments or questions from the board? You guys, if you don't need to add anything yet, that's fine. Um, all right, I don't see any other comments or questions. Any public comment on this item? Seeing no one rush forward. Um, it was moved by Schultz, supported by Romanowski to accept the $10,000 in lieu of construction. Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Burnett? Yes. Schultz, yes. Dio? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Dorimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item on tonight's consent, I'm sorry, pending business, is our Gateway Science and Streetscape project. Let me get this to page. Tonight, the request before the board is to approve the gateway signage and Baldwin streetscape enhancement plans. Uh, the township has been discussing developing uniform and cohesive branding plan for 10 years, for the past 10 years. I put that in there because it's, that's exactly how long I've been in this role, and I was passed a folder when I started here uh, about a project that was already underway, so it's probably longer than that. Um, at the June 20th, 2020 Board of Trustees meeting, this board awarded a bid to sign graphics to develop gateway and wayfinding signage to establish a cohesive look for gateway signs and signage within our township parks. Sign graphics has also developed a branding guide for both the main township logo use and parks rec and recreation department logo. This guide will be used by employees and provided to vendors to ensure a uniform look in all our marketing and promotional materials and wherever the township logo is used. Additionally, the township has been working with Superior Scape to develop a new landscape plan for what were to be the wildflower beds along Baldwin Road, which as you are aware, if you are familiar with the corridor, they never took as expected this past season or the season before. This landscaping along with the new gateway signage will further enhance the look and community image once complete. Attached to this memo are both the signage <laughs> and plans for the Baldwin streetscape, along with formal written proposals. If approved, prep, prep, prep work will take place this year for the Baldwin Road plant beds, beds with actual planting occurring in the spring of 2023. And gateway signage and park entryway signs will be installed in 2023. Uh, it's requested that the project fees be paid with unassigned fund balance dollars from the host fee fund, which we currently have a balance of $1.1 million plus a little bit. Um, it is a costly project. Um, the cost for the um, signs is 237,000 for the gateway signs and park signs, and the cost for the Baldwin landscaping is 235,000 and change. Uh, and again, the request is to come with the, from the host fee dollars. And the reason for that is because that's what the host fee is set up for. Um, it's nice, Kathy's here tonight, um, but we have a, a partnership with waste management that we receive um, community benefit dollars from them every year and they can only be spent on specific items that benefit all township residents. Um, uh, and I don't have the agreement with me in front of me, but um, that- Capital improvement project. Capital improvement for projects. Stuff. So things we've used this for in the past, Wildwood Amphitheater, um, some of the Orient Center funding. Um, so this is what that fund is set up for. Um, you can see the detailed quotes, but I do wanna show some of the images. And we've been working with a committee which includes our Parks and Recreation Director, Aaron Watley, Parks Superintendent, Patrick Ross, Sam Timko, Chief of Staff, um, and others. Um, I think the Parks and Path Committee has been engaged in this a bit as well. But this is the branding. It would be um, the same company that did the signage work here at the Township Hall, uh, Municipal Complex, also for the Sheriff's Office. So um, you can see the primary gateway signs and pathway signs. Um, and we, the, the, the rest of the park signage would be done um, through Aaron's budget, through the park's budget over the course of the next couple of years, I'm guessing. Um, we're still working through that. But this initial um, investment would include all of the signs at the, at the entry signs at the parks. Um, and you can see, uh, including, uh, that, that's the proposed locations of the signs. You can see the top letter A would be in the Baldwin median at our Auburn Hills border. Um, and there's, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but. Um, Where's you, the Jaslyn one, Chris? The Jaslyn one would be, there's two proposed locations. The one location we're, we're thinking we were gonna choose is the right there on the right, um, which would be in the new plantings area. Um, 
option that's option two option one would be further up the hill but not really at our border so we thought we would have it closer to our border um right sam unless the board feels real strongly we take your input but we kind of haven't talked about this as a committee and then there's a potential for some cost sharing with oxford township when this project was started when i started here when it was handed to me we were in conversation with the um, Oxford Township to do something together with them and that we split the cost 50-50 on the sign in our north border in Lapeer Road median. Um, so that there's an, uh, been discussion started with the township supervisor in Oxford to do that. Uh, and so we may have um, further discussions with them as well. And then this is our the sign in front of um, Culver's. We would not change the base we would just change the font. It's a small expense, but just so it matches with the branding and of all the other uh, signs that we're doing throughout the township. Uh, Ms. Schultz. Make a motion, I have some questions. I move to approve the plans for signage in Baldwin Street, scrape, excuse me, streetscape plantings as presented in amounts not to exceed $237,000 for gateway, Parks entry signs and $235,456 for Baldwin Road landscaping with funds to come from the unassigned host fee fund balance and authorize the budget and procurement director to make any necessary budget adjustments to allow for fall prep work along Baldwin Road in 2022. Okay, and then um, I will just cover briefly the, the flower plantings because um, uh, that's a, it's, it's not the same. It's, it's obviously two distinct different projects, but all related to community beautification. Um, we had a lot of, well, the, go, going back even five years ago, the meeting of Lapeer Road when they redid the road was supposed to be this wildflower mix. It never took, and then we ended up going back to grass or weeds, depending on who you ask. Um, same thing on the Baldwin project. We had planned to have these wildflower beds and they just won't take because of the harsh environment of the meeting of the road. So we did work with, a, um, we worked with a few companies to get proposals um, and then we will be vetting this um, with Galen from America in Bloom, who's our new friend, <laughs> to make sure. But um, from what we can tell, this is gonna be a nice mix of color that will be um, low maintenance as well as being able to stand up to the salt and the harsh environment of being in a median of a road in Michigan. Uh, and so we did, I mean, we've been working on this for more than a year with multiple different contractors to try to find something that's really gonna complete the project. So my, I, can, I will um, agree that it's costly, but we have a $55 million corridor that's not quite finished in my opinion that we really can, um, with a couple hundred thousand dollars, kind of finish it off and make it really um, a completed project. So that is the second part of this motion, which was made by Clerk Schultz, the the um, flower, the wild, what are we calling it? Sorry, the... Um, streetscape. Thank you, Streetscape. <laughs> yep. All right, now I'll entertain comments from the board, questions, Mr. Flood first, then Ms. Steele. I remember very well back in 2012, 13, 14, when you were talking about... Uh, Collaborating with Oxford, putting that sign in the middle of that median. Well, I remember M dot. It was going to be quite a costly sign because it has to be a breakaway. It can't be a substantial structure in there for safety. I remember, I remember that conversation going on, and then up there on uh, Joslin and Brown, uh, with a power. Is that a? We have to get a permission to, on the easement there, from the if, the, if it's put on that. Uh, Let's see, that would be the northwest corner where they put the flowers up there on the hill. Yep. We had to get a, was it ITT or ICT mm -hmm. or ICT? I don't remember. For, for where that sign is located along the fence line, we um, have a permanent easement from the property owners. They are not ITC, they're the business that is adjacent Storage. to the fence. Um, um, for the plantings, and so we have, we would be able to put the sign there. And then we also, we already have an easement at the top of the hill, so we could put the sign in both locations. Oh, great. But MDOT, that's, that's a curious one. I'm, I'm waiting to see what the cost on that one's coming back. <laughs> yeah, with well, the MDOT, MDOT one, we, the one, 
it's it's a narrow median, so the big stone sign wouldn't fit in the median. Um, so it would be the smaller gateway sign at that location if we're putting it in the median. And it is um, breakaway. Breakaway. Yeah. yeah. Even even the the stone sign is breakaway. It's not solid stone there. Um, so that would work too. And we have met with MDOT and the road commission on the permitting of all these signs and Great. have a clear path on that. Ms. Steele. Okay, so um, just a couple comments. I appreciate having the host feed to be able to do some of these things. Um, I just, as we are doing our budget earlier, um, sometimes I just wonder, if, you know, needs versus wants, and I'm just kind of concerned that, you know, we still are in debt with the CIA and we still owe the fund, um, and if the tax capture still isn't paying back the street scapes in which we've already funded um, along Baldwin. And so um, I'm hesitant on, and the reason why I'll vote the way I w will is I'm hesitant on spending more money on something um, that we haven't paid off already. And uh, I would have liked to see this in budget discussion, and we could have discussed it during the budget um, that we just, that we were just talking about, and we could expend it towards next year versus this year. Um, it's $472,000. I think it's um, a lot of money to spend. The signs, I do like the consistency of the signs. However, um, like I said, had we talked about it 10 years, we have to start putting these things in, as budget items so we can fund them moving forward. And so um, I would be more uh, uh, agreeable to probably fund the signs but not the not the streetscapes of um, $235,000. So I think that we can do some other things to make our streets look better, not necessarily replant everything that we've already planted and we haven't paid off that debt yet, so. Okay, uh, I'll uh, get your comments and then I have a few responses to that. Did you have something? Yeah, I do. Um, so the signs that we have right now, who owns those? Is it Chamber of Commerce? That's what and do we have any situation where they're agreeing to um, remove those signs or will we be removing them? And what will we do with them once they're removed? And also, as far as the one in the median with M24, I do remember those conversations regarding that sign. That's the only one I'm a little hesitant on. And, and it, it's just a, a very heavily traveled um, corridor in our community. I love it. I think they're beautiful. I support it. We have the host fee funds. I think it's a good way to um, beautify the township. We're on a roll and we're getting money from a lot of different areas that offset some of this. With all the grants that, that we've received, I think this is a great way for us to just continue our, our momentum. And then there's one at the corner that we put in that had the really cool um, metal sign with the pine trees, Aaron, I think you helped design that. It was at the bank. What will we do with that one? Is that a base for a future one? Are we going to remove that? Because it doesn't look anything like any of them. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to the person that made that sign for us and see what they would like to do with that. It'd be nice in a park, maybe somewhere. It's a cool sign, though. But that one goes, correct? Correct. So the, the one on 24, both... Um, North and southbound at the entrances, and then that sign there on Baldwin. They would all three go. Right. That was my question about the, the Chamber of Commerce signs. Well, and we um, we've talked about those signs, those chamber signs, for many years, yes, ten years, more than ten years. But you should do it while the executive directors. <laughs> well, or you can wait until mid November. Well, <laughs> well, well, there's there's likely that there there's might some, be, some, be some cost there. Some interest in someone reclaiming all or part of one or at least one of those signs. So um, we'll discuss that going forward, but that's not included in this right now. So um, there might be more cost to remove them? I would anticipate it would be minimal, if any. You think so? I think there might be people that have interest to... For those signs? Potentially, yeah. So, Julia? So wait, oh, sorry. Sorry. So, so you think there might... I'm asking the question because I want to know. What do you think they're going to do with them? If you know something, share it. Okay, well, I've already talked to one of the property owners that sits, sits in front of their place, and they've talked about being willing to take it out for us. Okay. Um, and we have a lot of volunteers in the community 
So there's nothing in it. I think we can get. I think we can get volunteers to remove those signs. I think, and I think there might be interest in people actually reclaiming them. Potentially, yes. Okay. Will you give us an update 100%. when you know? If we're going to spend a penny on it, it'll come back to this board. Good. And I still want to know the update on how you're going to get rid of them. Okay. I'd like to know where they're going. Okay. Thanks. And I'd actually like to know too if if there is no one interested, like what the plan is for them. Well, I would just say this. I mean. We have a couple people that are involved in the chamber that are right here tonight. It should go first to the chamber board. I would not want them to be removed until the new signs are in place. Mm -hmm. If we choose, <coughs> excuse me, if we choose option C1 for the entrance down the pier road, it's going in the same location. Mm -hmm. So that would be part of that project. It's going in the existing location uh, where that chamber sign is. But I think the main question for the chamber board and interim executive director is to ask the chamber board, do, does the, the chamber have any interest in coming and taking the signs and doing something with them, selling them, restoring them, putting them someplace? And then we also have a Orient Historical Society, which I haven't engaged with yet, but they, I would be shocked if they didn't want at least one of them that they would put mm -hmm. someplace. Jimmy's on the board too, so that's yeah. to Does this signage fall under our new sign ordinance? Jamie's not here. <laughs> because that sign's in the roadway <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've been, I mean, there's three agencies we have to work with. Yeah. We have to pull our own permits, make sure we're complying, which we will do, just like we did at this building. We have to work with MDOT on the signs in Lapeer Road, and we have to work with the Road Commission on all the other signs. And we have already started all those conversations. A um, couple thought. go ahead, sorry, Julia. Um, the Jesse Decker sign, didn't we have a developer that was going to pay for that sign? Uh, w yes, we did, but um, that money can be reallocated to the, the bathrooms or the paving project as well. So. Okay, because just looking at that, like $33,000, I didn't want it to get moved somewhere without forgetting that they were. Okay. Yeah, we have a lump sum, and that's in the, that's in the um, PUD agreement. That we dispense, so okay. it'll help us with the, with the bathrooms over there. Um, Are you hearing that, like an yeah. alarm? Yeah, it's like a. Okay. Um, and then, just a couple other things, just to speak to Donnie's concerns. Um, so, I mean, I, I I think I mean we talked about this very briefly before the meeting. In my mind, no that's the host fee has had this money sitting there. The board has been. Thank you. Um, we're, sp we're spending money on, um, there's no alarms going off on my phone, so it's probably just a fan or something. We're probably okay. We're spending money on, um, mo the majority of the money will be spent next year, correct, Sam? Yes. Yeah, so it won't be spent, the 400 and some thousand dollars is not going to be spent this year. It'll be spent next year. We will adjust the budget to rec reflect that. Um, I mean, I, I think... We've been talking about a branding strategy really, literally since, since I've been here, but we didn't physically move that money from the host fee to a signed budget, which we could have done, and frankly, we're going to be doing in this when we adopt this budget because we'll be spending that money next year. It's very similar to how we did the amphitheater, the Orient Center, these other community improvement projects um, using the host fee dollars. So that's why I feel comfortable with it. We're not, I want to be really clear. The majority of the landscaping on Baldwin is is great. It's mature, it's healthy, it is taken. Well, the area we're talking about are the large weed beds that were supposed to be wildflowers that you can see up and down the corridor because they're defined by the metal edging. Um, so we're not replacing a lot of landscaping up and down the corridor. We're replacing the stuff that what didn't work right. So it's not everything. So, um, but I appreciate your concerns and your thoughts, but I think this is exactly the way we're supposed to use the host fee fund, and that's why I brought it to you this way. Oh, and the last thing I want to say on the CIA, the CIA is working exactly the way it's supposed to. Um, we have multiple developments that are under construction that will be boosting our tax capture um, even as soon as this January 1. We have large-scale developments that are in the planning process. Baldwin Brit Village has gone through the first step of its um, approval process. 
Um, our CIA is not failing. It's, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So um, I, that's why I feel comfortable um, doing this. And we're not, we could have gone to the CIA because as we just learned in the budget workshop, the CIA was set up to spend $8 million and borrow $8 million. And so far, it, we're just around six for the road widening and our contributions to Baldwin. So we could have gone and hit the CIA for the signs and the landscaping that's in the CIA district, but we're not proposing that because we don't want to increase the debt. We're proposing using the monies that are in the bank right now uh, for this purpose through the host fee fund. Donnie, go ahead. Okay, so just real, just real quick, um, I just, I know it's not perfect, but I just, to hate to spend the money when it's already done for right now, and maybe we could come back in a couple years after the, some of the development's been done there, and then fix the flowers. It's just a lot of money to spend on flowers. And the only other process with that is once you put the flowers in, then you have the maintenance of the flowers, and then you have a larger cost for the future maintenance of the flowers, and it's just expensive, 236000 and we just haven't paid our mortgage payment yet. I don't, I don't say that there's anything wrong with the CIA. We just haven't paid for it yet. That was we, my concern. I just want, I'll, I'm going to disagree. We are on schedule with we paying our payments. We are scheduled to pay our CIA, but it's still the streetscapes have not been paid for yet. We still have a debt, right? Yeah, but we're making it just like everybody has a mortgage payment. It's one thing to say you're not making your mortgage payment if you're not. We, I didn't say we weren't making it. I said we haven't paid it okay. off yet. Is yeah, we do, we're we not free and clear, correct. Yes, thanks. But we are on schedule with our payment schedule. We have not our landscaping on our house that has a mortgage, basically. It's yeah. exactly right. right. Exactly right. So, um, and We're increasing the value on our house. <laughs> All right. All right, you two. <laughs> Is there any other semantics? Wait, no. I do actually have okay. a comment. That was leading up to my comment. So, with the new development, have we looked at them doing any contributions to maybe paying towards some of the landscaping? Have we went after any grants and or the signage for the grants, or <coughs> having like instead of doing. Uh, in lieu of, uh, Mo Sherry was going to do in lieu of, is there any of the developers down there that would want to contribute to some of this as well? Um, Mo Sherry has, and, and Silverman, and the overall development has made other um, proposed contributions if their development is successful, including a handicap accessible kayak launch, um, other park improvements, <clears throat> other improvements to the community. Um, we, our grant game is strong. We, we are on top of every grant, including the American Bloom grant that paid for those, a lot of those flowers that are at, at Jocelyn and Brown. There's no grants that exist right now to pay for gateway signs. Um, there are beautification grants. We just got one from American and Bloom, 25,000. Um, we plan on continuing to apply for that, but we have other projects we want to do, like the Pocket Park at Pasadena and Baldwin, which we met with the committee this week. We're applying for grants for that. We're applying for a DNR Spark grant for other projects. So we don't miss grant opportunities here ever. Um, we don't, there, there isn't one that fits this, this project perfectly. Thank you. Nope. All right, any other comments from the board? Public comment, anyone want to give comment on, on the gateway signs or streetscape enhancements? I have one comment. Um, I would just want to say thank you, Gary Roberts. You're doing a good job bringing things into the township for us to consider with a lot of that economic development. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing no one come forward, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Schultz, yes. Steele? No. Bernie? Yes. Dalrymple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Motion passes 6-1. Thank you. Um, and we will update the budget um, next year for that, moving the host fee dollars from host fee to those appropriate funds. Uh, we have one more item on tonight's uh, pending business. This is updating our Orient investment policy. I'll turn this over to Treasurer Steele. Did everybody get a copy of the resolution? Up on, the, um, on the computer. Okay. And uh, what we had done is, um, Right now we have Oakland County Investment Pool, which allows us to put in fund balance, and we were earning a good interest rate on it for a while. And the beauty about the Oakland County Investment Pool is that you're able to put funds in, and if you need them to pay bills and such, you can take them out. They're liquid. They're, it's like in a day you can get them. Um, so uh, the interest rate has 
dropped. It's like a half a percent. And there are some other vehicles in which we can invest in, um, such as Michigan Class and uh, what is um, Flagstar. Uh, Flagstar, we already have an investment. Um, it's part of an investment policy. And the first credit union in, was it Royal Oak? Um, so their interest rates are coming in at 3, 3.1 where we're only getting a half a point from Oakland County Investment Pool. So a part of the PA 21 Act, we have to um, amend or uh, have a resolution to add these different vehicles to take funds and invest in. So um, that's the resolution put before you and the agenda summer saying to adopt the resolution as presented. So moved. Support. Moved by Schultz, supported by Urbanowski. I think you did a great job explaining that, and I appreciate um, you being on top of it and not just sitting back Thanks. and finding ways for us to maximize our investments. Mr. Flood. Uh, question. I have a copy of our latest investment policy, which was last uh, amended April 7, 2014. Also, I have attachment A and B which is your resolution that authorizes all your banking and all your investments. And the last copy I got was amended October 29, 2012. Is this the latest copy? No. I, uh, we updated it in 2000, like, was one of the, when I was, I can send it to you right uh, now, actually. I, what I appreciate is I like to keep copies of these because this resolution is going to up, update uh, atten, uh, attachment A and B, right? Yes. Once we approve this. Uh, Sorry, Mike. And as a trustee, I, I, I like to keep these up. What's my own fault, too, for not asking? I think the last time I got this was from Mr. Thurber, and he was gracious to uh, give it to me. I, we updated it. We had um, Greg Pros help us uh, write it, a new one. Um, we expanded it and updated it and brought it before the board, and I, offhand, I don't know what, what uh, we did there. The, the attachments. Okay. That was the attachments got it updated. Okay. Yeah. Not not the policy itself. The, uh, the policy as well. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I, I just get a copy, please. I just want to make sure we get a. Would anybody else like a copy while I send it? If you include it or send it to um, agenda, Donnie, I'll add it with those other four attachments. And I apologize. You sent those to me this afternoon. I did not get them in the board packet. I found it in my extra. I had to really look for it in my. Yeah, we'll, I'll update that. I just ran the, out of The resolution's in there, though. The resolution that's, that's is definitely yeah. in there. It's, uh, it's under meeting attachment. <clears throat> Good. I, I had to really look to find it, but it's in here. Good. Okay, so we'll include the update. In the I just want to make sure we get updated. My updated thing, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you for doing this. I, I think it's great yep. that we have someone that's watching and figuring, figuring, staying on top of it. Maximizing the return on our investments. Any comments, questions from the board further? Just one for Donnie. How quick do you need that resolution um, certified, uh, Donnie? Tomorrow, if I could. Yep. All right. Any public comment on this? Seeing no one rush forward. Um, roll call, please. Steele. Yes. Bernie. Yes. Del Rimple. Yes. Flood. Yes. Urbanowski. Yes. Barnett. Yes. Schultz. Yes. That completes our pending business. We have four reports tonight. First, our police and fire reports. I move to receive and file the police and fire report. Support. We'll give that one to Schultz because she was right on this ear. Um, thank you. Thanks, Lieutenant, for the reports and all the good work our deputies are doing. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Next is the Orion Township Public Library 2023 budget. Move to receive and file the Orion Township Public Library budget as presented. Or comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Two more. Charter Township of Orion. Oh. Um, I move to receive <coughs> certified file. annual report. Sorry. The, sorry, I move to receive and file the 2022 certified annual report of taxes as presented. Report. Moved by Schultz, supported by Flood. Comments or questions? Public comment. 
All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I just have a quick comment about that. Go ahead. Um, Shannon did just verify that what that is is a role of what it was at the beginning of the year and to what it is right now. So that's that um, of what our assessed value is for the entire township. That's what that form was. And that we base our <coughs> millage rates on those numbers. I mean, our tax base is based on those numbers plus our millage rate. Thank you. All right. And then our last is the American and Bloom, American Bloom report. And we, I do, I lied, I do have some of these slides here. So um, just at the high level, um, it was a grant we received through Canadian National in conjunction with America and Bloom. And as you heard earlier, um, Trustee Kim Urbanowski, Chief of Staff Sam Timko, and Trustee Dalrymple traveled to St. Louis at the end of September um, to, to attend a conference, a symposium, meet others. And you guys want to talk? And then we had a, a, a ribbon cutting for the beautification that happened. Um, and you can see some pictures here. Anyone want to talk any more about this, or has it been said enough? Good job. Um, <laughs> no, we are just really excited to continue our partnership and find new communities to work with and to really work through the 64-page plan report that they gave us um, back on our community to kind of pick some things. We had a, a meeting the other day to kind of a debriefing to go through and say, what are some things that we can focus on for this year? I mean, as much as we'd like to tackle all of the things that they uh, listed in the report, we are smart enough to know that we need to pick some things and then continue to work the plan for the next couple of years to be at 100% to their um, to the rubric. So that is where we are currently going as to how do we get more groups involved? How do we start an Orion and Bloom um, committee? And how do we continue to make our community somewhere that people want to live, work, and play? And Aaron, one of the things that we talked about was this need. We talked about we're spending money on plants and things, potentially looking at adding, you know, a certified position in your office or spe specialized. You want to talk a little bit about that? This week? And probably at our next budget workshop, too. I don't know. Um, yeah, how, I mean, we're still working through the details right now, but uh, we have a need within the township in multiple departments for. Um, what we would call a naturalist position. So working with landscape design, um, just kind of, you know, we have it for Baldwin Road, there could be a potential cost savings there for parks when we're doing some developments throughout uh, different parks and then the safety path when uh, businesses come in, it could be like a liaison to working with OHM for landscape uh, work there, so. Um, we're, we're doing some investigating on it, but um, it could be very beneficial. And there's grants out there. Like Chris said, the township's grant game is strong. So there's grant game or grant dollars to um, help pay for some of this work, too. So more to come, for sure. Thank you. Ms. Urbanowski. I just wanted to say one interesting thing that we learned and heard from other communities while we were in St. Louis was that um, plants and flowers aren't just pretty to look at, they actually add economic development. I mean, it's an important part of it, right? Just like you were saying earlier, in, in, you put beautiful landscaping in your house and it automatically kind of, I mean, it does, right? It, in, it increases the value of your house. It's, it's an economic development piece that I think is important. You can't have, you can't tell people, please build your stuff here in this, tumbleweed area that's supposed to look really beautiful. That's my opinion. I mean, we're trying to, you know, sell the idea of, of building in that corridor. Yeah. And, if and, and I've had this vision for a long time, but now that we're on this mindset of having some large planners throughout the community that businesses would be responsible for, um, that maybe the township purchases, but then businesses adopt um, could be a contest, could be just, just to beautify the community. And I do agree. You know, those are the things you notice. I notice when I travel and go to other cities, the communities that put a high focus on the look of their community. So um, I love this. I love this partnership. Thank you to Kim and Julia and Sam and Jenny for um, not only finding this, but fostering this relationship. So good stuff. Is there a motion to receive and file that report? So moved. 
<laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Now we're back to the public. Anyone else have anything they want to add from the public before we bring it to the board? Seeing no one come forward, we'll start today with Mr. Bernie. No comments tonight. Mr. Flood. Mr. Barnett, I want to congratulate you and thank you on behalf of myself and my neighbors along Maybe Road for getting that road finally <laughs> fixed and paved. Uh -huh. Chris and I talked about this a couple of years ago during COVID. If everyone knows that that road started sinking in the, in the wetlands down there, and finally they put in the two culverts. Well, when they, it's supposed to be done this spring, well, when they dropped the culvert off, they broke it. Well, it took this long to get this culvert replaced. And Chris got the road commission, because he's our liaison with the Oakland County Road Commission being supervisor, to get that road reclassified as a primary connector, east and west. And I think, if I'm, if I'm correct, there's almost 6,000 cars a day travel that road. Eventually, when Walden Road gets paved next year, that'll be another connector, east and west. But they finished today putting that in, Mr. Supervisor, and you ain't gonna believe the neighbors that got a hold of me, and I said, Please tell Mr. Supervisor, all he hears is complaints all the time. Let him know some good stuff once in a while. So That's nice. Hopefully the phone calls will be coming in. Anyway, I just want to give the kadoos on that. And also, I want to thank our staff and whoever come up with this idea for the nice pumpkin contest out there. You folks amazed me. I walked in, I went, wow, look at these displays. Congratulations, very nice. That's it, Chris. Thank you, Ms. Steele. That did bring a smile to my face this morning for a Monday. That was a way to start a Monday off. So um, I just wanted to um, thank Kim. I, met, I failed to do it last meeting for her service of 34 years, and we had a nice retirement party for her um, at uh, Johnny Black. And uh, she sent a thank you card thanking everybody who attended and the nice gifts and thoughts and the card with a little bit of extra cash in there for her. So um, thank you guys and- it's Not from the taxpayers. Not from the taxpayers. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. And thank you um, for all those who participated and thank you, Kim. And I, I and we're doing good with our um, new people in our department and um, we're, we're, uh, we're on a nice roll getting ready for the tax season coming up in, it's gonna come up in November. Once we get past the election, if the board allows it. So, so go Donnie, that's my last thing I want to say. <laughs> but we will have one more meeting, so I'll be able to have one more time before um, the election. Thank you, Donnie. Ms. Schultz. So I'm gonna start from a perspective of Penny Schultz, resident, mom, grandma, uh, wife, um, and a supporter of life. My family and I are voting no on proposal three. And that's um, a very important issue that is on our ballot. So from the perspective of a person who, who loves God and honors God, I am supporting Proposal 3 with a no vote. And now I'll move into my role as township clerk. Um, online is a voter guide for vote411.org. Gives you tons of information regarding the upcoming election. All the proposals, anything that you would want to know about everything, do your homework, get informed, find out what's out there. We have lots of information on the township website that will assist you with making an informed decision. We also have League of Women Voter Guides at our front desk in the clerk's office, but if you hit vote411.org, you'll be able to find out about all the judges, the candidates, all the proposals, anything that you need, you can go online and find that. You can also see where you're registered to vote as well. Clerk's office is gonna be open on Saturday, November 5th for AV balloting only from 7 a.m. until three o'clock p.m. So if you're not able to get here during no normal business hours, you can come on that Saturday, but all we can do at that point for you is to get you a ballot issued. We're gonna have it set up like a precinct so you'll have a private place to vote your ballot right here, and then you can deposit it in the drop box, seal it, deposit it in the drop box. So we have a lot of training that has taken place. We have close to 170 election inspectors that are being 
being trained. We've completed the electronic poll book training. We're also going to be training for our absent voter county board, which will be sequestered right here in this boardroom. We're excited about that as well. We've got about 7,000 AV ballots issued. And if you're looking for a comparison, there was 16,000 approximately ballots issued during the presidential general election in November 2020. So I'm expecting a pretty high turnout at our precincts on election day. I want to thank all of our hosts who are holding precincts. A lot of our churches are. But I want to remind the voters that you will not be voting in the school district um, buildings any longer. We have moved all of those into municipal buildings as well into as in some of our churches. So go to the Orion Township website, orientownship.org. We've created a new QR code that's going to tell you where you go to um, vote on election day. Tons of information is out there. We want our voters to be informed. I would love to see. 100% participation. This is a really important election. There's proposals, there's park proposals, <coughs> and there's all, all, all of our candidates. So vote. We've got everything available for you. Everything's going to be ready. Precincts open at 7 a.m., and they remain open until 8 o'clock p.m. Pick up one of your neighbors, take them to go vote, and go out to have coffee or tour the township and look at all the beautiful... Um, America and boom. That's a wrap. Thank you, Ms. Urbanowski. Um, yeah, so every year the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce celebrates uh, what is known as the Impact Awards. We have an Impact Award winner here and here and over there. We have a lot of them already in the room. But we've announced the ones for 2022 this year, and I just wanted to recognize them um, today. And if you're interested in, in um, attending, it will be on the 1st of December at Paint Creek, Paint Creek Country Club from 11.30 to 1.30, so put that in your calendar. But congratulations to the following for Community Beautification Award, uh, the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club um, received that for their pollinator garden. Um, Youth Impact Award, Deputy Jennifer Erickson, super excited about that one. Um, and she's with Oakland County Sheriff's Office, of course, and she's a school liaison, is that a correct way to say that? Um, our Entrepreneur of the Year is a young lady named Rachel West who owns Miley Therapeutic. Our Economic Impact Award is the um, General Motors Orient Assembly plant. Um, and our Business Person of the Year is Jimmy Johnson, who is the owner of Graphic Takeover and um, one of the people that helped us with the America in Bloom tour. He works with the um, Historical Society. So uh, those are our winners for this year and hope to see you at the Impact Awards. Awesome. Julia? Um, just two things. Uh, we are still feeding people. Um, I can tell you that from today, we are seeing an uptake in cars that are coming through the lot at Forgotten Harvest. Uh, we estimated today about 330 cars uh, came through, the, or 330 families came through the line today, which is higher than we've been lately. So if you have things that you would like to donate, I know our Lions Club is also doing a food drive, but if you have some other items, um, we are always looking for them in the pantry, the village pantry across at Canterbury. So you can reach out to me. Um, I'm going to put together some social media stuff in the next few days to kind of get that pantry um, stocked up for the holiday season. And that's it. <laughs> Thought I had one more. How many weeks, Julia? Oh, 136. That's remarkable. Um, thanks, everyone. Good to see you all. Um, I just congrats to the Parks Department. They had a great event on Friday. The Boo Bash it was sold out. Like weeks in advance and lots of, it's a good thing when you have too many people, but we get the calls too. So sign up early for our community programs events. They're, they, they sell out fast. Um, the um, upcoming, we have 13th annual Treats for Troops. Um, the Sheriff's Office is accepting Halloween candy as its 13th annual Treats for Troops collection to send thanks and encouragement so the drop-off days are Tuesday through Friday, November 1 through 4. So you can drop them off even here. We have the wrong address on there, but it is at 2323 at the substation. Um, so if you get, if you just want to support the troops, that's one way you can do it. And then um, circling back to your question, Lil, on the transit millage, lots of important um, ballot questions happening this election. 
the transit millage is confusing to a lot of people. Um, and we have tried to get additional information. It generates about $66 million a year countywide the first year for 10 years, and it's a 10 year millage. Um, we would have the right to not, if it's successful, there would be no opt outs. So if it's successful by one vote in the county, then every t person in the county gets taxed, even if it failed in our community by 10 or 15 points. If it passes by one vote countywide, every single residence in the county will be levied the millage. It's basically one mil, 0.95, just under one mil. Our current NOTA millage is just under 0.25, so it's about quadruple what our residents pay. I have asked for information. I had hosted a lunch meeting with the architect of the plan, the chair of the Board of Commissioners, Dave Woodward, um, a couple months ago with about 20 other supervisors and mayors right here in the community room. And there just isn't a lot of information. He presented most recently to the Novi City Council. Um, they've said that we might get more services, but we don't have anything definitive. I mean, when I say we, I, I mean NOTA. Mike Flood and I sit on the NOTA board. WOTA is the Western Oakland Transportation Authority. OPC is the Older Persons Commission that services like Oakland Township and Rochester and Rochester Hills. So there's a lot of frustration over the millage. Um, I am not anti-transit. I've got people from calling me all kinds of things. I personally don't support it because I don't understand what our residents get for quadrupling the tax levy that's on them. I believe, and we'll have to ask Dan Kelly this question, if the millage is successful and they will use a portion of the one mill to support NOTA, I think even though that millage did just pass in August, we can choose not to levy it, correct? So certainly, I can tell you at least, I guess I can't tell you certainly, I can tell you I would not be in support as one of seven board members to levy both the NOTA millage and the Oakland Transit millage if it's successful. Um, I'm not against transit, I just don't see the value for our residents in quadrupling what they're currently paying. There's been no promise of expanding services. There's talk about it and frankly, Dave Woodward, in his own words, said, "Once we get, you know, once we pass the millage, then we can start defining what the plan looks like." I don't operate that way. I'd, I'd rather see what the plan is we're asking people to vote for first, and then we can explain the benefit, and people can make an informed choice. The way it sits right now, in my opinion, there's too many questions, um, and I work for government, and I don't always trust government. <laughs> you should question your government, even us. You guys do a great job of that. Um, so that's my con personal concerns about it. Um, I am not an anti-transit person. I'm the chair of the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments. We do transportation planning for our whole region. I support transit if it makes sense. This, I just don't see the plan. So I'm personally not in support of it at this time. Residents can make their own choice, but I think a lot of residents are gonna be surprised if it's successful in communities that vote it down handily, which will happen. Um, there's no opt out. When the current smart program, communities can opt out. So um, I would encourage you to ask the county, ask the Board of Commissioners what the detailed information is on the plan um, because they are the, the ones that put the millage on the ballot and they've given us virtually no information. Um, we're working on an FAQ document that will be on our website that is not biased, that just answers a lot of the questions we're hearing. Um, hopefully we'll have that up in the next few days or so. Um, but we are getting lots of questions and people are confused by it. And I just want to say on its bottom line, we have no idea how to even do the tax bill because it's going to be November and then we have to decide whether or not we have to collect NOTA and this at the same time. And we only have a, what, a two, two week, one week to, to come up with Yeah, that. from when the election is certified to when we have to send out the tax bills is like one week. Yeah. And so if there's any dispute or concerns or questions, we're gonna be in a tough position where we're, are we levying the NOTA millage, are we not? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's, it's confusing. And we've virtually gotten nothing from the county on this. So um, I'm not saying I would, I, I, I would be, I've, I've gotten a lot, a lot of hate Facebook messages and mail from being anti-transit and racist actually. And that's not it at all. I just need to see the plan. I think it's, it's totally reasonable. This proposal was hatched the week after the August primary. 
and there still aren't details. And we're vote people are already voting on it. I mean, the ballots have been out for a couple of weeks. And I just think it's disingenuous to our residents. It's, it's all political. The timing of it was specific to right after the August primary um, to, to launch this. And so that's, that's what frustrates me and a lot of residents. And then last, this is my personal opinion, I, I am excited to be casting my vote for my friend. We don't always agree, as you even saw tonight. Um, but I, I can't think of someone that will work harder for our residents um, at the state house level than Donnie Steele. And with that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn at 828. So moved. Support. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.